Hi guys, welcome back. As you can see, I've progressed from my XT250, the promise I made myself once I passed my test. So now I've got my lovely little BMW G310GS, which most of you have seen was delivered on the back of a truck from FedEx, which was fantastic. The bike isn't quite set up for me as yet. There are just a few little issues that I've got that we are going to address. One of my issues is that, um, well, with the XT250, I could put my feet down just on both sides and to stabilize myself when I came to a stop. This one's a little bit trickier, as you'll see. I can't put both feet down, so I have to shuffle myself across to put one foot down or shuffle myself across to put the other foot down, depending on where I stop and what the camber is, so I can actually stabilise myself. We're going to adjust that this week with a lowering link, um, more about that later, um, and that should just give me a little bit more um, stabilisation when I put my feet down, and just, it's for my confidence really. I could ride it like this, I can get used to it like this, but... Um, you know, going off-road and stuff, I think I want something where I can actually put my feet down a little bit more easily. One of the other issues I've got is that I struggle at the moment, <laughs> as you can see, to put up my side stand. I can't quite reach it. I'm not sure whether it's my boot and I'm not sure whether it's the position of the stand or because I, have, I can't put my other foot down so I can't reach underneath it. So like I say, that's a bit of an issue for me at the moment. One of the other issues I have is changing gears. And I'm not sure whether this is the fault of my boot yet because I haven't tried any other boots. But as you can see, um, I can change gears, but I'm just clipping the side of the gear lever instead of getting my foot underneath it. I can't bend my foot anymore. And we're going to look at adjusting that for me to make that easier. I'll try some other boots as well, but obviously these are the boots I like to wear when we go out. Just adjusting that a little bit to make it more um, solid, a solid gear change so I'm not just clipping the edge of the gear lever. So all these adjustments will be made this week and we'll show you what happens in the end. Okay, so this is the lowering link that we've acquired. This has come from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, Best Stem must be the brand. It's come from the US. Great service from America. Better than we get here in Australia in regards to postage. This came in just a few days through Amazon, as I said. Not a cheap item, it, but when I got it, I was quite pleased that the engineering is just spot on. It's CNC machine. You've got this beautiful, just alloy, aluminium, alloy, steel, whatever it'll be. It'll be just a, an alloy of some description. It's anodized black. It is a classy piece of kit, so you understand what you're buying, what you're actually buying. It goes, if you zoom in here, there, and what'll happen is we, it's that way around. So what happens is that's where the original mount is at the bottom of the suspension. What this does is slot in on these grooves here, on these indents, into the original mount on the swing arm. You loosen the bottom of the, uh, you take out the bolt, replace the bolt through there. This bolt then goes through the bottom of the suspension. So you drop the rear spring, goes back. Therefore, slot into this section here. So you're basically moving the mounting point back and that goes back probably about 50 mil. It'll lower the bike, it says 35 millimeters. It's a nice item. The reason it's expensive is basically it has to be machined beautifully and it has to be strong, tested. For us in Australia, that cost me 184, well, it cost Chantal $184. And um, I think it'll make a massive difference to the bike and for Chantal getting the feet on the floor. Of course, down the line, this is going to be done this week. It will affect the front end. So we're going to be looking at lowering the fork legs, 15 millimeters drop through each fork leg, of course, to see how we go. And here we are back from Coast Yamaha, $110 including my breakfast scrambled egg bacon and a large coffee from the nearby cafe. And one lowered GS. Now I'm very much flat footed and knees bent. She's going to be well happy tonight. Well happy. Apart from the fact that it's due to absolutely piss down. Anyway, job done. One thing we didn't consider 
And that is often the case in these situations when you're adding an aftermarket accessory is how compatible is an item if it's not made by the manufacturer. I'm safe currently with this distance here. Now we've got a gap from there to the tire has been significantly reduced by moving that bracket back. Not a problem at the moment. Not a problem at the moment on these standard tires. It's about 10, maybe 15 mil. However, consider now the fact that if down the line we want to change these tires to something a bit gnarlier, they're gonna be a little bit taller. They could be knoblier and they could get a bit close to that section there. So that's worth considering and it's something we're gonna to have to look at. We may have to consider a different size tire, one that's maybe not quite as tall to compensate for that. I'm not sure they do a 150, 60, 17, or even a 140, 60, 17 that's knobbly. But it's something we've got to look at. We've got to consider it, considering the 12 mil gap there now, as opposed to what would have probably been 20, maybe 25 mil before. We've halved the distance between the bottom of the shot and the tire. Not a problem currently, but we're gonna to have to do a little bit of research. Something I was aware of was the fact that I'm gonna to have to reinstall this, which is basically the crud catcher. It covers the back end of the shock absorber there. There is a compromise, of course. I'm gonna to have to take out a section of this to accommodate the new bracket to make it fit. It will expose the back end a little bit to the elements, certainly the bottom end of this bracket. Not a major problem for us. Regular maintenance, regular lubrication shouldn't be an issue. Let's have a look at the front end. As you can see, we've got a lot more fork legs showing here above the triple clamps. As you can see there, we've got a bolt that's been uh, loosened off, as has these two here. Same situation, then they move the fork legs up both sides. We've gained maybe 12, 15, we've got a 15 mil drop there now. We've still got a bit of room if we need to go more, but uh, that's a good compromise and a good starting point, I think. You're smiling? Yeah. Why? Well, I've got my toes. Yeah. touching the floor which is great and I just feel a little bit more stable but then it just takes absolutely nothing just for me to do that so I can do that on either side yeah and I feel and I feel like the bike's still upright when I do that even though I'm slightly slanted and yeah now I feel more confident it's great okay so we've got the height organized as you remember and recall Chantal was struggling getting her feet underneath or a foot underneath to turn to go up the gears so what we're going to do now is adjust the height of the gear lever to accommodate how her foot moves. To do this, we're actually gonna need a few items which I'll come to. Basically an eight mil open-ended spanner, a 10 mil open-ended spanner, six millimeter Allen uh, key, either on a socket or a T-bar, okay? And another thing we're gonna need, surprisingly, is some blue Loctite, which I'll come to in a minute. So. Let's get down to how we're gonna adjust this lever. Now, we've worked it out that Chantal needs to be at about 300 uh, millimeters. And at the moment we're at 280 to the center of the front of the gear lever there. So we're gonna go up a couple of centimeters. Now, let's have a look in close here. We've got an issue. Now, you see these little nuts here, if you come in and have a look, we've got nut there, nut there. You can get to them, but there's nothing worse on a motorbike or any vehicle than looking at rounded off nuts and bolts. And that, that one is a little bit awkward to get to. And I hate having to struggle with a spanner, an open-ended spanner, and end up chipping paint off this here. So what we're gonna do is, in fact, not bodge it. We're not gonna end up rounding uh, a nut off just for the sake of saving a bit of time. It's very simple. We're gonna take this rear hanger off. It's just three bolts here, six mil Allen key. So we'll crack that off on there. I have had them off once just to make it a bit easier, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna whip them off here. So basically, and they're quite, 
they don't come straight out. They're not, and there's a reason for that. They're actually Loctited. And that's the reason why we've got some blue Loctite so we can Loctite them back in again. I'm not going to argue with what BMW have done. I'm going to put it back exactly how it came off. And we're going to put it back on the way that they put it on. I think BMW tend to know what they're doing. You'd hope. So, let's get that one out. They're all the same. You can see on here, a little bit of blue Loctite. And that's why we're going to use it to put it back on again. It's important, but as you can see now, look. If I can, I've got a bit of a funny angle here. I'm trying to show you at the same time, so I'm not using the T-bar very well. So we'll put that there, nice and carefully, so not to knock any paint off it. That's given us a lot easier access to these two nuts here. Now, one thing I want to show you here, a bit of a, for me, an unusual configuration of an engine. The exhaust pipe comes out of the back of the engine. And I want you to be aware, if you're gonna do this, make sure your engine's cold because there's nothing worse than touching a hot exhaust pipe. And the reason I'm saying that is I'm actually gonna put, if you're coming close, you see here, that section there's a flat on that bit there. That's eight mil. And that's the 10 mil note next to it. To get to that, you can't, I don't want you swinging on a 10 mil spanner here against this ball joint. So we need to support it by using that flat. To get to that, you need to put a sp your eight mil open-ended spanner through there and get it from the back, which is why you don't need to be fighting against a hot exhaust pipe, because it's there. So then what you do, slot it on there, and you've got your spanner in place and hold it from the back. And then what we'll do, and to slacken these, they're, they're actually a different thread but you've got to just try and get an angle on it without actually damaging the paint on the lever. And you've just got to try and get that nut loose, which I have done, just flicked it loose there. Do you see that now? That's push away, spins it off. Get it to about halfway there on that thread between that. Now that middle nut there is in fact solid, it's fixed. There's no thread on that, that's actually welded in place in the middle. Same for this one at the front. So take the open-ended spanner off, pull it back out. I can get to this one just by doing that with the lever and I can just put that there. And again, it's pushing it away to loosen it. It's a crit and then a bit more. And then you should be able to spin it off like that. That has now given us this span adjustment that we needed. So what you then do is basically use this to make it go higher. So that thread, you'll spin. So if I go towards me, so from the front it's clockwise, it's going down, which is not what we want. We need to go that way. And if you come down here and watch it from this height here, as I'm spinning it, you will see, you see it moving up? Beautiful, that's exactly what I want. And what I'm looking for is 300 mil there, vertical from there. A little bit more yet, I've gone up a little bit. So we're spinning this like so, a bit more. I'm looking for about 300 mil to the center of that hole. Can you see it? Brilliant, that's where we need to be. Now at that point then, we wanna make sure this is not gonna spin. So let's spin these back. So I'll put my finger there to stop the thread spinning. Spin this nut back to the, to the end there. Same with this one, that towards us. Bosh. We then get the open-ended spanner. That way up on that one there without trying to damage the paint on the lever itself. Still a little bit awkward, but a lot easier without that rear hanger on. And again, we need to just make sure that's nipped. So we'll just nip that like that. That's good, that one's done, that's nipped. Same with this, and again, back to putting that through there. Grab it from the back with the cold exhaust. Put it on the flat. And again, we've got access to it now just to nip it up easier without that hanger there. That's my opinion. If anybody wants to try and battle around that hanger and not take it off, it's up to you. But I, I'd, I would say it's important. It gives you that chance to make sure you're doing the job right and not risking rounding nuts off. That's got it nipped up nicely. So that's tight, that's tight. Then we'll go back to putting these back on. And um, as I say, we're going to do it exactly as BMW said. 
And what, how we're going to do it, in fact, is by a little bit of blue hylamar. Blue hylamar, that takes you back. That's gasket sealer. Blue Loctite. We're just going to put a little bit on each thread. Don't need a lot. That's all you need. You see, it's right in the middle of that thread there. And it'll run in. And I'm going to actually get one on straight away. So what we'll do, we'll run that one in, if I can. Messed up a bit there, really. Let's just get these lined up on these holes. So we'll do that one there. And that one will line up with that hole there. So I'll run that one in with the T-bar. These are a bit awkward. They're not that simple. But I'm not going to mess about. I've got that one started. And I can see that one's lined up nicely there. So I'll, I'm not going to run them all in quick. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mess about because I don't want this blue stuff going off before I've got them run in. I want it to be effective. And again, you, you don't need a lot. Get that one there. I can see that one's lined up with that hole just about. Just needs a little bit of an adjustment. If you don't get that lined up properly, you've got to be careful you don't cross-thread it. And you'll know because it'll be awkward to turn in. Oh, that's much freer, much nicer. Right, so I'll make sure we've got some on this one. Same again. Just a little bit of, a little bit of blue for the dads. Let's run that one in. You see how it's all pushing in place there. So we'll run them up so they're nipped and then we'll nip them off properly. nipped in as well. So what we'll do now is just an extra nip, extra nip, extra nip. That's exactly how BMW did it. So we'll put them back on the same way. So that's it. Job done. So Chantal's now going to have a sit on it and see how that feels. It'd be a lot easier to, to test, test the fact that you can get your toe underneath it actually riding it. Now of course everybody's different in relation to the height and how you want it. Ultimately it's just down to you and what footwear you're wearing. It depends on your boots, depends on how easy it is for you to get your foot underneath. We've adjusted and played around a little bit beforehand with Chantal's foot and basically the problem she had before she because of the boots she couldn't point a toe down enough to get it underneath the lever and now as you can see she can and it was a bit of trial and error so what I suggest people do is sit on the bike with the hanger off, possibly. So all you've got is basically your foot peg, your gear lever, and have these nuts slackened off and adjust the span back and forth till you're comfortable. And that's the way forward, depending on the footwear that you're wearing. Time for a ride, don't you think? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 